River Crossings came to be because Stephen Hannock was asked to curate an exhibition. He said to the head of Olana and myself, I'd really like to do something to help you all. What, you know, what could it be? I, I'd love to just donate a new wing or, you know, but that's not in the cards. Maybe I can curate a show. Together, the Thomas Cole House and Frederick Church's Olana are the birthplace of American art and of environmental consciousness in this country. He said these two sites are where it all began. There's something about contemporary art back to the places where American art was born. The artists that we started with were artists that had been represented in my paintings over the last 20 years. Stephen Hannock is someone who has been impacted by the art of the Hudson River School since he started painting. He brought me on board and we started to flesh out the idea of the exhibition to bring together the Thomas Cole National Historic Site and Olana and a joint venture. We had never done something of this scale and something throughout the entire historic site and on the grounds. It's really just a much bigger effort than we had engaged with before. So part of the idea of river crossings that's inherent in its title is that it's about this kind of ping-ponging across the river from Catskill to Hudson and back. And the idea of the motifs that these artists painted, the Hudson Valley and the River Valley and also the mountains to the west. And in addition to the idea of being able to get back to New York City very easily. A visit to Alana is a very special thing. Here you have 250 acres of a hilltop that have been totally designed by an artist in the 19th century. But I think the fact that there's contemporary art in it actually connects it more to us because here you see how things that are the products of the great artists of our time fit so well and so nicely into this meticulously handcrafted house. And I think that's something that visitors have been experiencing to their delight really in coming to these exhibitions. When you go into Alana and the first thing you see is the court hall with Martin Purrier's extraordinary sculpture, Question, which is this large work made out of three different kinds of wood, which seems to have literally sort of sprung from the ground of the building and then goes right back down into the ground. We were really taken back by how enthusiastic every single artist was. Are you kidding? They're going to show contemporary art there. Which one of my pieces do you want? And I think a lot of that happened because it was artist to artist. So collaboration has been a big part of this exhibition. For example, Charles Ledre was uh, brought on board when we talked to Martin Purrier and Tom Nazkowski. Valerie Hegarty is another local artist. Her installation is extraordinary. And most people go in there and they don't actually notice it right away. And then they notice that there's a painting seemingly on an easel in the middle of the room and they've all been broken up as if someone's gone at it with a double barrel shotgun. That they are about the idea of nature kind of reclaiming art. This was a constant theme in Cole and Church's paintings. The idea that human history is still being written but tends to be short in terms of empires and cultures. All the pieces really connect. Angie Kiefer has this piece that has Niagara Falls flowing. What would a video piece be doing in a house that has something to do with landscape painting, but it's a landscape. One of Thomas Cole's most favorite pieces of the landscape was the waterfall. He said it's the voice of the landscape, and that's what this piece is. It's the voice now of the house. You can hear it flowing. The beauty of the Hudson River School paintings and the majesty is also embodied in Angie Kiefer's piece. One of the works at Olana that seems most connected to the site is Maya Lin's Silver River Hudson, which hangs in the small sitting room right caddy corner to Frederick Edwin Church's great painting of Petra in Jordan. And it also hangs caddy corner to a magnificent window that overlooks the Hudson River Valley to the south. She celebrates the necessity to maintain these waters, uh, to look out after them. You can see the exact spot where you are standing in the Hudson River estuary as it wends its way down to New York City. One of the 
pieces in this exhibition that really affect people viscerally is Jerry Gretzinger's work because it is a surrounding piece. It's kaleidoscopic. Jerry Gretzinger's map is the product of almost 50 years of labor, and I think it's one of the showstoppers in the exhibition. The other mystery was what pieces go where, and that was a whole adventure in itself, but the pieces pretty much found their own way. We had to kind of go on a leap of faith, and as the artworks were chosen by this curatorial team, Stephen and Jason, and each one came to light, we were wowed by the quality of the artworks. Turns out, that Cedar Grove, the Thomas Cole House, is a great place to see contemporary art. Right now we have Cindy Sherman and Stephen Hannock and Thomas Cole all sitting around his living room talking together in a vibrant, crazy, but silent conversation. <laughs> and I think when you're in that room, you can, you can feel the artwork interacting. It's so rare to see contemporary art not on bright white walls, not with high intensity lights in galleries or museums, but rather in 19th century lighting conditions, subtle light, in a way where you really feel like you can engage with the works in a different manner. I think this exhibition shows that these types of historic sites are places of inventiveness and innovation. What really struck people was this site is someplace that I really want to be and I never even knew about it. We get to celebrate that rare harmonic when the work and how it's displayed really comes together. And I think that's one of the things that we can uh, appreciate here with the River Crossing Show.